Hi guys, it's me. I'm back again. I just wanted to let you guys know that recently I've been with groups and we have been doing dry fasting. And this time the dry fasting is really, it has taken a real shift in my life that I now no longer feel hungry. I don't have that hunger sensation that I used to have, that gnawing hunger sensation that's kind of gone. And so now I don't have it. So it's like, oh, it's a newfound freedom. Not that hunger is always there for me, but I will get hungry. But now I just kind of don't get hungry. Like it just, is gone. It's been a complete shift. It's like, it's a complete revelation for me that I was like, oh my God. I mean, I've been on this path for almost four years now. And, and, and after like almost four years now, I'm finally feeling that. And so I just want to let you guys know about that. And I think I have to credit that to continuing being on this path and also to do a three and a half day drive with the group because the group energy changes things. And also um, I have been regularly doing 24 hour dry fast. So that also helps. So, you know, um, being on this path, it's, it's not like it just happens like, oh, all of a sudden, oh, oh, you know, I no longer, we don't think about food. It doesn't, it just doesn't, it's something that in my experience has been that you have to keep working at it. So it's like, if you want to climb Mount Everest, you know, you just can't climb Mount Everest. Like, okay, one day, okay, now I can climb Mount Everest. It's like a constant practice and you have to keep working on it to climb Mount Everest. Like, you know, you may climb little mountains and then I, I don't know exactly what goes into climbing Mount Everest, but I imagine there's a lot of different mountains you have to climb then finally keep working at it, keep working at it. And then you can finally maybe attempt to climb Mount Everest, right? So I think the Breatharian path is kind of similar. You have to keep working on to keep working on to keep being with like-minded people, you know, going maybe on retreats or going maybe uh, and being with people that are doing it together, maybe doing dry fasting together, maybe doing uh, once a week uh, dry fast together. But what those kinds of things, what's going to happen is that it's going to train you. It's like, it's, it's like anything else. I mean, if you want to get good at playing tennis, you have to keep playing it. Right. If you want to get good at becoming a breatharian, you have to keep, keep at it. And so these are the tools that you use is, is doing the dry fasting is doing your meditation is doing your yoga is, uh, you know, being with like-minded people and maybe fasting with like-minded people, all these things, maybe in person as well. I know with COVID and all that, that a lot of times things are online, but when you get together with people in person, it has a bigger impact. So it takes effort to be on this path. It doesn't just happen like, oh, okay, all of a sudden I'm on this path. It takes a lot of things that you have to keep doing, keep being persistent. If you look in, in the sports thing, people who are big in sports, like say if you're Olympic the swimmer, it didn't happen just like that, right? I mean, you they had to keep working on it, keep working on it. And so that is what this, if you want to be a breatharian, you have to keep working on it, keep working on it. Nothing happens instantaneously. There's a lot of things that you work have to work through to become a breatharian. Uh, you have to work through all your emotional issues. You have to work through, a lot of the spiritual things that are going on and a lot of physical things that are going on and mental things that are going on. A lot of things you have to keep working on. But one of the concrete things that you can work on is doing once a week dry fast and it is being together and maybe doing three and a half day dry fast with other people or if you can't be with other people then being in, then doing it by yourself but that keeps you in the game it keeps you practicing it keeps you like you know like a tennis player it keeps you keep practicing you keep doing you keep doing you keep working on it and then it just gets easier and you see shifts happening shifts here happening shifts there happening and then before you know it it's like oh wow you know i'm not no longer that person that i used to be you've kind of pushed through so much of this thing so many blockages that you might have had and and the drive has definitely detoxes and, and moves a lot of blockages that you may have in your body. So that's been my experience. So, so don't give up. If you guys are hungry, if you get hungry, you have these cravings and all that, keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. But again, the important thing to keep in mind is be gentle with yourself because there is no tough way to become a breatharian. It's all about being gentle, being kind, being sweet to yourself. So yeah, if you have cravings, if you have, there are different ways to handle that. And if you have been watching my YouTube channel, you know, all the different tricks and things that I've showed you how to handle that to continue and maintain yourself on the breatharian journey. So yeah, I just want to give you guys the good news that I don't have that annoying hunger any longer. So it's gone. Boop.
gone. <laughs> and so don't give up hope. If there's something that, you, that you're struggling with, keep at it, keep at it. It'll go away. You know, if there's, because I've been struggling with this hunger thing. I just keep at it, keep at it. And now it's gone. And so, so whatever it is, just keep at it. Persistence is the name of the game. Just keep doing it, keep doing just like a Mount Everest climber, you know, just keep at it, keep at it. And then eventually they climb Mount Everest, keep at it, keep at it. And eventually then you continue to, you know, be on the breatharian path. And so, yeah. Anyways, uh, that's just what I have to say. Anyways, so thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.